You have greatness within you. You are powerful. You are limitless. You are strong. You are courageous. You are love. Welcome to the Reconnect to Your Greatness podcast. Enjoy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another episode of Reconnect to Your Greatness today. I am very excited to have with me Mr. Kevin English. Kevin, how are you? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Yeah. Hey, I really appreciate uh, you having me on your show. It feels like we just connected the other day and uh, now I get the opportunity to ask you some questions. So All right. Fair enough. Fun. The tables are turned. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, so Kevin is a husband, he's a father, an online personal trainer and a nutrition coach, as well as a CrossFit coach. And he's the creator and host of the podcast Over 50 Health and Wellness. He's the founder of The Silver Edge, where Kevin's mission is to reverse the common narrative of aging and help men and women in their 50s, 60s and 70s get into the best shape of their life so they can show up as the healthiest, strongest and most vital version of themselves in the second half of their life. So um, you are very intentional and crystal clear on what your mission is there, Kevin. Yes, I am. Absolutely. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, he practices what he preaches because when we were uh, communicating uh, earlier today before the show, uh, Kevin made sure to let me know he was at the gym and he was going to get, get it done. information sent over. So you practice yeah. what you preach. I, I appreciate that. The listeners needed to hear that. The viewers obviously can see that that you're in fantastic shape. So uh, let's kick it over to you, man. Share with the listeners and the viewers a little bit about Kevin English. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, I am 58. And as you can tell, probably from Ryan's intro, I am, in fact, passionate about healthy aging. And I guess probably the best way to kick this off is just tell you the story of how I got here, because I wasn't always this way, right? Um, so like a lot of folks, I, I, my, I started out life with all the advantages, right? I, I was active in sports and wasn't particularly good, but I played little league, I wrestled a little bit and, and I grew up on a farm. So I was fairly active and outdoors and had all the advantages that farm life bring, right? I had good diet and understood where my food came from and all of these things. And then fast forward a little bit into my teen years, there was a divorce, moved off the farm and things fell apart for me a little bit there for a while. Um, I struggled a little bit with just kind of dealing probably with some of the emotions of just divorce and all of the baggage that that brings struggled with some uh, substance abuse problems for a while and just really was underperforming for quite some time. In fact, my father and I were just discussing this uh, recently and you know, he's always been a, a very active athletic person. So a, a big uh, inspiration in my life personally. And I, you know, we were talking kind of about this trouble in teen years, it's a little easier looking back at him now than actually living through them, of course. And, uh, you know, I had this insight that, you know, at the time, I probably felt I didn't want to be like the jocks, they were clicking, I didn't want to be there. But I, looking back at it now, I probably desperately did want to be there. I wanted to fit in somewhere just like most people do. And I found that the I guess the stoner club, if you will, were, they didn't have a very high, high bar for entry, right, to be in that club. And there, you didn't have to extend yourself, you didn't have to try, there was very little chance of failure. And so I fell in with that crowd, um, didn't do well for quite some time, eventually got my act together a little bit and got a job. And I was pretty inactive in most of my adult life, I would say. I, other than surfing, I live in the coast. So that was really my saving grace. I was obsessed with surfing. So I spent a lot of time in the water. So I'm kind of healthy, but sort of kind of right. Not, had no idea of what I should eat or eating healthy, but I could get away with it. I was pretty young and pretty active. Um, fast forwarding a little bit more. One of my brothers one day said, hey, we should run a, a marathon. He had this mistaken idea that Oprah had run one in four hours. And we're like, well, we could surely we can do that. Now, it turns out Oprah did in fact run a marathon. She did not in fact run one in under four hours. But we got we did a marathon. And he, he me and my and my two brothers actually ran a marathon. And I was hooked. So I got really into marathoning for a while. I did a bunch of, you know, half marathons and trail running. And then I got into triathlon, kind of an obsession for me, but it was just a very active 
kind of every weekend was focused around my long run or, you know, when I got into triathlons, my long bike, my long swim, all of that kind of stuff. And then one day I just stopped, completely stopped. My work was really taking off. I was really, really stressed. Again, I, I was eating like crap because I could just, I just needed calories because I was burning them so fast. So not really discerning with what I was eating. And I found myself getting back into this, some of my older habits. I was drinking every day. I had two kids by this time and a wife. Um, my career was going gangbuster. So I was, that part of my life was very successful. But I found myself doing odd things like, A, I wasn't exercising. I was still eating as if I were. So you can imagine what happened. I gained a lot of weight. I was getting very unhealthy. Uh, we were making really good money back then. I had a nice big house. And believe it or not, I, you can see behind me, I've got books. I love books. I actually had a library with these glass doors that closed. And it was really, really cool. And what I would do is every evening, I found myself going into this room and closing the doors, closing myself off from my family, in effect, and having my cocktails. That was my that was dad's time, right? So a very unhealthy habit there. Anyway, long story short, my my health just really took a turn for the worse. Uh, my sleep was in the tank. My, my libido was pretty much non-existent. My stress was through the roof. And I had this kind of scary event. I thought I was having a heart attack, spent a couple of days in the hospital, wasn't having a heart attack. But basically, instead of one major thing being wrong with me, there was a ton of little things, or maybe not so little things wrong with me. So that really got me thinking, hey, what's going on here? And how can I how can I course correct? Oddly enough, Ryan, I still thought of myself as a fit person because I'd been fit in the recent past, sort of, but I was very unfit. So I, I decided, okay, that's it. I'm going to clean up my act. Um, I'm going to try and I'm try and manage my life a little bit better. I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to eat better and I'm going to get in shape, but I, I really didn't know what to do. So into the internet, I went and as you can imagine, um, I went a hundred different places. I went vegan for a while. I tried gluten-free for a while. I joined a Globo gym. So walked in there, just terrified. I'd never lifted weights in my life. And there's all these big, strong men and fit women in there. And they obviously knew what they were doing. And I would timidly walk around and watch the people on the machines. And when they got off, I would do what they did with no real structure, no real program. But I was on this journey, right? And I was trying to learn and trying to understand and eventually I started putting pieces together. I started strength training and I started, you know, I, I managed to find a couple of personal trainers, a couple that weren't so good and a couple that were decent. Uh, I stumbled into a CrossFit gym. My daughter dragged me into, into a CrossFit gym, got really, really in love with CrossFit for a while. I'm currently a CrossFit coach, in fact. And I'm here today after having, this is about a 10 year journey of trying to put all those pieces together. How do I become the healthiest human? It started out, I just didn't want to be sick. And then it turned into, no, I really want optimal health. I don't want to be not sick. I want to, I want to have optimal health and vitality. And how do, I, how do I get that? How do I get more of that? And so I've basically been on this journey. It continues today. I still am seeking, well, how can I get just a little bit better, a little bit stronger, a little bit healthier? How can I increase my vitality? How can I just really show up in this life as the best version of myself? And that's kind of how I got to where I am today. Yeah, yeah. I uh, really appreciate your vulnerability to, to share all that, um, Kevin. That, that's, that's deep. And there's a lot to unpack there. But uh, the first thing that I want to chip away at is just what you said last about the the not being sick part, because I, I feel like, and I don't want to uh, throw stones in our medical system, but I, I feel like in Western democracy, or at least in the United States, it's, it's just a lot of this symptom management, let's just keep you not too sick versus, hey, let's really go out and grab life and live optimally. Um, do, do you see that as well with maybe some of the people that you work with? 100%. So you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, our Western medical culture is fantastic. If you have an acute illness or if you break a bone, if you've had traumatic injury, we are all over that. However, with what you're talking about, more of this chronic disease, we do a pretty poor, uh, a pretty poor job of taking care of these folks, right? We're very good at prescribing medicine for symptoms. 
and but what happens is is somebody's leading like i was leading this very unhealthy lifestyle is okay so first i get on some you know i've got type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes i get some med there my my cholesterol is bad i get a little bit of meds there my blood pressure is high and these things are all interrelated right and i get some I get some another pill for that, right? Now we have this what's called polypharmacy thing, right? I'm, now I'm accruing all these medicines and none of them are curing me. None of them are making me better. In fact, as soon as I stop taking them, I'll feel worse because they're masking my symptoms. And so I think what you're referring to is that our modern Western medical system really isn't set up to identify that root cause and cure it. And in part, we're to blame, right? Because I think as a as a culture, what we want is a get well quick fix. We don't want to do the work that it takes to become healthy, right? We don't want our doctor to say, well, what I want you to do is stop eating ultra processed food. I want you to strength train two to three days a week. I want you to walk every single day, at, you know, on and on and on, right? On these healthy behaviors. Instead, I think we're kind of guilty of saying, give me the pill, I'll pay for it, my insurance will pay for it. Yeah. And so yes, I absolutely see that as the prevailing culture of our of, on both sides, right? The, the medical side, and then again, on the consumer side. Agreed. Yeah. That's a great point. And I guess we could have a robust debate about um, have the two of them gone along in parallel, which is to say, uh, are, are is the healthcare consumer saying hey doc give me the quick fix and um is the doc too quick to and this is a discussion for another podcast sure. yeah is that the doc too right quick, is the doc too quick to just hand out that that quick quick fix you know so um i don't want to digress down that that road let's <laughs> you're right let's, we could go off on that that's quite a tangent yeah uh, but but let's bring it back to you know very powerful. I'm feeling the energy and the emotions of this sense of wanting to be seen and wanting to fit in kind of with your childhood and then kind of sliding into, hey, where is that? Where is the barrier of interest uh, entry lowest? And hey, if that's easy for me to sneak in there, because Kevin, I think so many people do that today. And then they get there and it's just like, well, now this is not even comfortable, but known to me. And I don't want to break back out um, because I'm afraid. So what strategies, what inspiration do you have to share to people so they can reconnect with their greatness and step out of that comfort zone? Yeah, okay. I think first of all, there's got to be some self awareness, right? Because for me, and of course, if you're a teen, that's, you're probably not self aware, right? You're, you're following your path. And you're, there's a lot going on there. And if you're dealing similarly, even if you're an adult, and you're dealing with some emotional baggage, and maybe it's buried a little bit, you may not be self aware enough. So I think that to, somehow we have to discover that we have to dig that out, right. And Ryan, I know you're really big on vulnerability. And as we discussed in our when, when we were talking last, you know, that can be tough, especially for guys, right, to admit that I'm weak, I need help. Yeah. But I think the way you framed it is one of the one of the strongest, uh, most courageous things you can do is to say, hey, I need help and right that that place of vulnerability. So I think being open to that and then just being open to the path, the road and, and hard work that it's going to take to get where you're going. Now, in my particular case, as I was sort of bottoming out there and this would have been college ish years, I really wasn't doing well. And it was a family member who interceded on my behalf. So my sister had invited me to lunch with one of her friends. And it turns out her friend was, was in, you know, this older, I mean, I was in, in my 20s. So she, and she was in her 30s or 40s. And she was this old lady, right? And it was kind of odd. But she was very interested in me. And she talked to me. And about halfway through that meal, I said, now, wait a minute, something fishy is going on here. And in fact, she was a therapist. My sister had gone out, found a psychologist, brought her to lunch, and kind of bushwhack me right i mean i wasn't prepared for it but it was that it was her courage right of saying yeah. hey my brother needs help he's not going to get it on by himself apparently let me intercede here let me take some steps so i would say certainly you know there's a couple ways we can look at this what can i do for myself in order to get out of that bad place that i'm in and also looking at other people what can i do to lift them up right and it may be that that at the right word at the right time or the right action at the right time could have a profound impact on somebody's life. Now, at the time for me, when I figured out that my sister had brought a shrink 
to <laughs> to lunch with me, I was horrified. I was embarrassed. I, I didn't like that. And I, I was a little upset with my sister. Now I went on and had a, a very meaningful relationship with that, that psychologist who brought a lot of value into my life and probably started me on this path to get me where I am today. Certainly was a, a, a major stepping stone. I, I know I babbled there a bit, but I, I, I hope that kind of answered the question a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Wow, man. I, I didn't know that that's how... Um... I mean, that's a very important, powerful inflection point in your life. It is. it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. I'm not sure, you know, who knows? Who can say? Maybe I would have bottomed out in some way and, and pulled myself out of it. But that's the arc of my story, right? That's just, that's how that happened to me. It's just that, that intercession at that time and in that place. And the way I look at it, it's, it was the right time in the right place. I, I was... I needed that message. And although looking back, you know, at the time, I probably didn't feel I wanted that message. It was there for me. And thankfully, I received it and, and, and was better for it. Wow. How often do you reflect on that lunch? <laughs> you know, it, that's been a long time ago now. But it certainly is a, a major point in my life. And I do, I do think about that moment from time to time. And I think about my, my psychologist, Linda, um, from time to time. Yeah. I'm a little biased, obviously, because I'm a clinical yeah. mental health counselor. Right. So I got to kind of promote for the, for the field a little bit. But I think it's important for the listeners and the viewers to understand, you also had to be willing to receive that. 100%. You know, you could have put the wall up. You could have just stood up and said, nope, I'm out of here, right? Yep. Help the listeners and the viewers, and I'm not trying to explore this because I, I, I want to, you know, be your psychologist, but I think that there is some very important intrinsic value in maybe whatever you were experiencing in that moment, there must have been some part of you that said, okay, I'm here for a reason. Um, and what message do you have to share with the listeners and the viewers about you know hey if you're kind of teetering on that or oh, i could go out and put my wall up or i could receive this what message do you have to share around that yeah i I'd, I'd lived a the better part of my teen years and my young 20s with that wall firmly up right and for me the outward signs of my emotional struggles were substance abuse and other things i i was acting out in other ways just it is what it is. But really, the root cause of that was something, you know, it's almost like we're going back to what we were talking about before, where there's a root cause and there's a symptom. So yeah. somebody could have tried to treat my substance abuse. But really, at the end of the day, they probably weren't getting to the, the root cause, right. And so I think that it's back to vulnerability and, and being willing to say, yes, I need help. And for me, I, you know, I, very deep inside of me, I must have known I needed help. But it's kind of hard looking back to think what was in my head at the time, but I was just so angry. And I was so, I suppose, sure in the way that adolescents and young adults are sure that yeah. they know everything, right? Yeah. And I, I think that really, the big key is, is if even if you think you need help, but you aren't sure, ask for help. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, big, I'm obviously, now I'm a big proponent of that, of that. And, and to this day, I'm working on being vulnerable and being okay with being weak, being okay with not being accepted, being okay with maybe even not being loved, right? And that's kind of a lot of my problems were in this deep rooted sort of insecurity. And to be able to explore that and to be okay with where I am now. And it's really tough when you're going through I think a hard time to again be self-aware of these things yeah. but if you can just be vulnerable enough to say yes i could i can use a hand right now right. i think that's the key yeah absolutely be open to it yeah yeah reconnecting to your greatness means kind of releasing that guard down just enough to stick out your hand or to maybe better said to grab onto the hand that's reaching out to you and saying, hey, you know what, I, I will grab onto this hand, I will take some help. You know, if you're drowning, and somebody throws you a lifeline, and your pride or whatever that is, cause you say, no, I don't need that. <laughs> 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 or, you know, I'm strong enough, I'll swim 100 miles to shore. That's, I mean, that's just a scary place to be. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Having yeah. that courage to grab that lifeline is can be the 
be the difference in your life. And certainly if you want to be great now at the time, I didn't want to be great. I was just wallowing in pain, I think. Yeah. Um, and I had no concept of, you know, what I'm doing today, right. Trying to optimize performance or optimizing anything. I, I'd never, I felt like I was never good at anything. I was a poor student. I was a poor athlete. I didn't fit in or these were my thoughts at the time. Right. Right. So I wasn't worried about reconnecting to my greatness. I was just, just kind of drowning. Mm. And yet today you embody and live that greatness and you help <laughs> other people to live it, yeah, right? So it absolutely. You. Uh, yeah. you just had to, I tell you, but Hey, you know, that's a powerful point, right? That's like a powerful perspective, you know, like shut up about my greatness. I don't care about my greatness. I don't believe in that. I'm just trying to handle right. what's in front of me today. That's not where I was at the time. Yeah, no, I, I needed to be met where I was, which is, you know, pretty close to my rock bottom. Um, so yeah, I wasn't concerned with greatness. I just wanted to be not drowning, I think. Gotcha. Just out of pain. If you could go back, and, and this is the last question on this topic, and then we'll start to move forward. If you could go back and whisper, self, whisper something into your ear to that young man sitting at that lunch table, you know, let's say you got to hold the door open for yourself walking into that lunch and you got to just say something to yourself in passing, maybe a sentence or two. What would you say to yourself? Wow. You know, I'm going to answer this in two ways. One is I'm, I'm afraid of these questions. What would you change or what do you regret? Because that that may have been necessary, a necessary part of my path to be who I am today. And I'm right where I should be today. I am who I am supposed to be today. And so I think that that might have been an important part of my path and as painful as it might have been. But what would I say to myself walking to that lunch? I would say, Kevin, be be open, just be open to possibility. Don't because I was so close. I was so just inward looking. And just to be open and, and apparently I was open enough that 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 I, I managed to come out of that but yeah, yeah. just be willing to be open. yeah and I mean that sounds simple but when you're at that rock bottom to be open to anything can be scary yeah yeah so let's fast forward now um you you come out of that that dark place you start to um, expand, you know, your self awareness is increasing, you're being vulnerable, you're seeking some help, you're making some, uh, you know, improvements. And now we come into now life is going good. Business is making money. Um, you know, you got the big house. I'm sure a lot of people have been kids, on the, yeah, yeah, life, right. life and kids, got a it, yeah. family, right? So uh, sometimes life could give us this ebb and flow. And if we can't figure out how to, you know, maintain that level of self-awareness applied to the ebb and flow of life, we can revert back to where we were before. Share with the listeners a little bit about your perspective on, hey, how do I, you know, I don't like to use the word balance, but how do I keep that level of self-awareness as I'm riding the roller coaster of life? Yeah, I think part of it is just really understanding that it is a ro roller coaster and there are seasons in your life, right? So I think most of us, certainly those of us that are in our 50s and 60s, we can look back and say, okay, no, that season was my, you know, my, my earning season, or I was really focused on my work. And then the kids came along, I was really, you know, I'm pouring into making a better home and life for them, etc. Um, you know, then the kids left and now I'm, I'm doing other things. So we all have these seasons and I'm not afraid of the word balanced. I mean, we say a balanced life and we can talk about what does that really mean, but really having that, that balanced perspective in your perspective of knowing that being open to, Hey, this isn't the right time or season for this. And to have the awareness to understand what it is you want, what is, what are you chasing? What is important to you? And to make that a, you know, make a plan to make that a priority in your life. How, okay, how do I get what I want? Whatever, you know, X is what I want, or, you know, this is my current state. I want to go there. Well, how do I do that? How, you know, we set these goals and we move towards them. But I really think I, I like the, I like the word balance. I know that gets a little bit thrown around. We need a balanced life or work life balance, but I'm a big, big fan of allowing seasons to ebb and flow and not so much to, well, yes, to allow them because life will happen. There are things outside of our control that will happen, but also to create that ebb and flow, to shape it and to make it what you, to make it work for what you want, what you need and what you're passionate about. 
Yeah. How do people get it to work for what they want without sacrificing their health and wellness? Ah, okay. So <laughs> it turns out I have some experience here. Yeah. So I had at one point, like I said, I was very I, I did outside technology sales. So I was on the road all the time, pretty high stress work anyway. Um, I had been doing it for a number of years and I was, frankly, I was knocking it out of the park. I was very successful in, in my job, but it was consuming me. And it, for me, it took a, like I said, a pretty good health scare to shake me out of that and say, okay, this isn't worth it. Because in my mind, I, I, we all know this story of somebody who was in their 40s and they seemed to be pretty fit and they just keeled over and died of a heart attack. And I felt like I was close to being that person. So it's a matter of just finding that perspective of what's important and what's, you know, at the time I thought what was important was making more money than I'm, you know, I was the rep of the year or one sales. Work. Well, how do you top that? Well, you got to, you got to repeat, you got to go out and do it again. And I was just so driven towards one thing that I really lost focus of, I mean, I lost, I lost focus of my children and my wife. And that's a pretty scary thing. I lost, you know, focus on friends and just everything else was a byproduct. I was so focused on this one thing. There was no balance in my life. And in fact, there was no no thought whatsoever for my health, even though, like I said, oddly enough, during that time, I felt like I was pretty healthy. Now, you know, I, I would have looked at myself or gone to a, a doctor and got a physical. I, I wasn't healthy. But so back to your original question, how do people sort of balance this, all the, all the things that they have in life, maybe they're caregivers, maybe they have a demanding career, or um, they, they're passionate about certain subjects that have nothing to do with health and fitness. It's really a matter of starting small habits that you enjoy and building on those, right? So a small healthy habit could be as simple as I'm going to go for a walk for five minutes a day. And somebody might think, well, that won't get you very healthy. Well, if you're not walking any minutes a day, it's certainly a step in the right direction. Or they might say, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to drink, you know, three quarts of, you know, three quarts or a gallon of water a day. I'm going to drink water every day. And somebody might think, well, that doesn't sound like it's going to do much to move the needle on health. But if done consistently, even these tiny little steps, they add up over time. And so Really, I think another thing that confounds us here is so much hype in my industry, that health and wellness industry, there's so much information and misinformation that it's hard for the average consumer who's not a fitness fanatic or a nutrition nerd to really parse through all that and to understand what they should do. But at the end of the day, the basics still work, right? If you, if you move a little bit each day, if you choose healthier foods, if you hydrate, these things are important. And I tell people, especially my caregiver people, my people who are really focused on others, that if you don't take the time for self-love and self-care, meaning what specifically for your, yes, your mental, emotional, spiritual health, but also for your physical self, you cannot show up as the best person for fill in the blank for my elderly parents, for my children, for my career, for my coworkers, whatever that is, right? By taking care of yourself and taking care of your health, you are in fact being the best version of yourself, the most capable version of yourself and the best able to, again, fill in the blank. What are you passionate about? Being healthier will make everything better towards that goal. Yeah. What I hear you saying is, Whatever we're trying to execute on, wherever we are in that ebb and flow of life, whether that's the earning stage, whether that's the parenting stage, whether that's the husband, wife stage, right? Whatever it may be, we're bringing ourselves to that stage. And if we are optimized, right, then we can be ourselves, our best 100%. self in whatever that may, whatever stage that is, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, yes. So I say that, you know, when people commonly will say things when I'm talking about nutrition or fitness, and th these are the things we're going to work on, well, I'm just so busy, I don't have, I don't have enough time. And of course, it's, it's a little patronizing to say we all have the same amount of time in a day. But really, it is it's what you're really saying is I don't prioritize that I have prioritized these other things above myself. And we go back to that discussion of self love. Now, hold on. So what I hear you saying is, of course, you got your job understood. Maybe you're a single parent, you got kids, or you've got a you know an elderly parent that you're that you're responsible for, whatever it is. And I understand there's a lot of demands, important demands on your time. But what's more important than 
are you not as important as these people that you love? Of course you are. And it, it can be a it can be a tricky conversation sometimes. But yeah, you're absolutely right. By taking good care of ourselves, we show up as the best version of ourselves for others. And to me, that is that is a big aspect of love, right? And that in that sense of the word, it's my self love, and then allowing that self love to flow out into into others, and to and not only to other people, but into other causes or things that I'm passionate about. Yeah, love it. That's a great, great way to tie that in all together. So uh, as we start to bring this in more towards the closing, um, share with the listeners and the viewers a little bit about, you know, kind of how you help people as a as a, as a coach and, and, uh, you know, as a personal trainer, um, you know, CrossFit's probably tough to do online, but share share with the individuals how you can, uh, you know, offer services uh, online. Yeah, so in this post COVID world, of course, everything is available online now, right? So online training is just blown through the roof here, whether that's personal, you know, personal trainers or nutrition good or anything else, right? So yeah, there's, I work with folks, I mean, my I work with people over 50 primarily. I have some younger people, but the majority of my clients are over 50. And we work on one-on-one -on -one personalized goals. So what are your goals? What do you want? And the vast majority of my folks are, I don't want to be fat. I want to lose weight. I'm overweight. Uh, but other people have, you know, I've, I've got aches, pains, or I used to be in shape. I want to get back in shape. But it's it's usually something along those lines. So I'm here. I want to get there. So let's draw out this roadmap of how we're going to do that. And again, there's so much crap in our space. People will say, well, you need to do intermittent fasting. You need to do keto. You need to do CrossFit. You need to do any, any of these things. Or but, you know, some of my favorite ones, hey, drink this fat loss smoothie every night before bed and fat will melt off your belly as you sleep. Okay. No, it won't. Um, I mean, if that worked, we'd all be very svelte looking individuals. So I, I work on crafting a, a specific map really of where we want to go. So this is where we want to go. And without getting into too much detail, because there's a ton of different ways we can do this, right? Sure. My big thing is before we work on, say, let's use weight loss as an example, because that's very common. 70% uh, of all US adults are now either overweight, obese, or morbidly obese. So that's a pretty scary number. And we're no longer even shocked by that number. But if we use that kind of as our example, we say, okay, well, first things first, let's get you metabolically healthy. Let's not focus on the weight loss. Let's not put you on a diet because the common, one of the most common thing people hear is, well, just move more and eat less. And there's a number of reasons we won't go into right now why that's really maybe not the best prescription for long-term sustainable weight loss and your ideal body right. composition. So my big thing is let's, let's restore metabolic health. And then from there, if we need to do weight loss, we do weight loss. We need to do muscle building. We do muscle building. But really, that weight loss will almost be a byproduct of the healthy roadmap that we're building out. Yes. So that's kind of how I work one-on-one -on -one with folks. Yeah. 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 I love it. That's, that's such a great approach. You're absolutely right. I say to people, what's the first three letters of the word diet? <laughs> exactly right. No, I'll, I'll be the first to say diets, diets suck. And if you're doing it all the time, if you're chronically dieting, if you're yo-yo yeah. dieting, if you gained and lost the same 10, 20, 30 pounds year after year after year, you're not doing it right. It's right. and doing it again, the same way is not probably yeah. going to have any different results. I don't care what new year's resolution it is. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. So, uh, how can the listeners get in touch with you? How can they reach out to you? They like what they hear. They say, Hey, Kevin, Kevin's making a lot of sense. You know, I'm I'm a 60 year old man that just retired, or 65 year old man that just retired. How, how do they get in touch with you to work with you? Yeah, my website is silveredgefitness.com. That's probably the best way there. They can, if you're on social media, you can connect there to Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Um, I've got, I am the host of the Over 50 Health and Wellness podcast. So I do weekly podcasts where I interview all kinds of folks on all the topics that are of interest to folks over 50. Ryan, we just had had you on, for example. So it's not all nerding out on nutrition and workout, although we have some of that. But yeah, yeah those are probably the best two ways. Yeah, awesome. Well, I really, really appreciate your vulnerability, Kevin. You know, you and I had spoke last week about just how powerful that is of vulnerability. And, and you have really done that and exemplified that here. And I think that the listeners and the viewers are really going to be able to appreciate that and connect with it, right? Because whether our, our pride wants us to admit it or not, we've all been there, whether it's for you and me, it was substance abuse. For other people, it may be food. For other people, it may be, yeah. um, you know, you, you fill in the blank, gambling or whatever the case may be. Uh, 
anybody that's had an internal pain that searched for something external to uh, solve it or soften it can relate with, with what you've shared today. Um, and so I really appreciate your vulnerability. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate you having me on. And of course, if I hadn't talked to you, I think just recently might have been a little tougher for me to open up. But I feel like this is a you, you make it very easy to be vulnerable. And since we last spoke, I am really on that. I'm, I'm back on that path, man. I'm, I'm on that journey. Right? Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin English, check him out. Silver Ed, the Silver Edge, um, you know, a man who is vulnerable and also still practices what he preaches today. And the viewers can see he's in great shape. So, um, you know, Kevin, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Ryan, my pleasure. Thanks. to all of you out there. My name is Ryan Joseph Kopiar, and I want to invite you to come on this journey with me to learn more about healing and the holistic power of the mind-body connection. I think at the end of the day, we all want to live a happier, more joyful and fulfilled life. And my hope is that together on this journey, we can explore the mind-body connection and what it means to truly experience inner healing. So I wanna thank you for joining me and uh, hopefully this will be an exciting journey that we can all take together.